Hello everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis video. My name is Alex, I am the Angry Asian Artist, and I will be talking about one of my favorite artists, if not my absolute favorite, and his name is Ashley Wood, an Australian fine artist who used to do a very small franchise of games. Uh, he did the artwork for Metal Gear Solid. I'm sure a lot of video gamers may have heard that name for quite a bit. It's a pretty big deal, I would, I would suspect. Anyways, enough of the jokes, let's talk about his work. Now, there are a myriad of things where I feel Ashley Wood does really well. And I'm going to talk about three of them. I will most likely go back to his work because I absolutely believe his work is masterful. And it is probably one of the best demonstrations of his fundamentals, his, his sense of just great theory applied in a very stylistic way. Now, first, I want to talk about the cut. So given that Ashley Wood's style is a very dramatic style, he comes from a comic graphic, uh, comic and graphic design background. So his sense of art is to be able to create that impact. And one really good way of creating that impact is to have really strong lighting. So how does he create that sense of lighting? Now, this is the least criminal when it comes to uh, explicit uh, content, so hopefully this is not too offensive. But, as you may probably have ex suspected, the lighting is brimming very well on the, the butt of this woman and the robot. And it comes down to a very nice cut. Now... The cut here, I'm going to draw it out for you, it's very simple. It's basically the line where the light and shadow are connected. So basically where the, the exact edge of when the light stops hitting the object and creates the shadow. Now you may think, hey, the around their objects might not have that because it's sort of like it's rounded right it shouldn't have a very strict line but if you really understand lighting you realize that yes there is a distinct point when the transition is really stark even for rounded objects so i want you to take a sphere and really light it and really see, even though there's a gradation where the light and shadow is, it is still pretty clear where the transition is. So here you can see that Ashley Wood kind of exaggerates it, even for rounded objects like the butt. He will make it very, very clear cut where the line is, where the cut is. So as you can see here, I created a very general movement of where the light and shadow is. Now of course you can really argue that he stylizes a bit here for the sake of composition in order to, uh, to he creates a gradation to darkness as he goes down here. And that's because if the light is up top here, then it makes sense. So, as, I'm just going to rush it here. The light is coming from the top left, meaning that it makes sense that the areas down here are darker. Now, if you want to be more intricate about the cuts, we notice that the butt 
has these areas. Again, he's not playing around. He wants the cut to be dead obvious. And he's not going to have those gradations that you might have for rounder objects. This is going to work fine because, again, he got the cut's location proper. So even if the gradation is non-existent, the sense of lighting is still there. Now, this is insanely hard to master. To be able to balance logical lighting with composition. Now, it might be easy if you're just drawing one figure on, on a canvas and that's all the elements that you need. However, he has to balance around the fact that he has two figures and he has a lot of elements going on, especially with the robot's back. So he's stylizing while keeping that logical lighting. He's not breaking the rules too much in order to create that great composition. So the lesson here is, again, really note where the cuts start. Really understand where the light and shadow are transitioning in order to create that lighting. Now, the second point I want to talk about um, is environment melding. And I want to mention here just now before I forget, I will be talking about some of these concepts in later videos with other artists to demonstrate how they use the same ideas in a different style. But anyways, let's go to environment melding. So this is something that a lot of people kind of get caught not doing, even though it's very obvious. And, but even then, even if you know it, it is, again, hard to balance around logic and composition. So here, a lot of cases, people are taught that the character and the environment are separate. And it comes down to people who start off doing uh, art because of anime or because of cartooning. They think, Oh, because there's line art, I'm just going to create a, there's line art, it means that there's a distinct, distinct point when the character and the environment are cut. But in painting, that's a different story. In painting, you have the ability to meld values and colors together. And in reality, you realize we're not line arts. Nobody in this world has line art around them, if that makes sense. We're not separated by lines. We are separated by values and colors. And that's where you can take advantage of it. So while we can be separated by color, we can also use it in order to create a connection between the environment and the character. So how do we do that? It's very simple. Have your character have the same value or very similar values to the environment. Bring that environment into your character. This will make it so that it looks like it's a coherent piece. So you can see here the background here is very similar to the skin tone of the girl and this will again create a relationship. Imagine if the entire character is covered in a value that doesn't share anything with the background. This will create a very disjoint painting. This is a very common mistake with a lot of people's work. They don't take into account that your character and your environment are in one picture. And if you don't, you get caught into creating a sort of like creating uh, two different parts instead of some of parts. So other areas would be really this transition here. You see that there's some reds here that are sort of leaking into the robot's shoulder here. 
And you can take some of that red again to really bring that into the rest of the robot as well. You're creating a relationship. Imagine again if the robot had a very distinct color that had nothing to do with the rest of the palette. You're going to end up with disjointed parts. So really there are some masterful uses. Again, there's one of the most masterful um, parts where he melds this piece is where the girl has the same value as the robot. So here, this is one of the most important parts of the piece. And the reason why is this is where we establish the relationship between the girl and the robot. If these values are too uh, distinct, then it may look like she's not in the same area as the robot, and obviously she's sitting on the robot's back. This little area changes the entire dynamics and the relationship between her and the robot. Now, I want to really touch upon what would happen if I were to, let's say, not melt it together. Maybe the value here is darker than usual. See how wrong that is? See, look, I'm going to zoom in with here. It looks a little bit wrong, right? It starts to look like they're just different parts. And there's something weird about it. It's also, again, it, like if you want to go back to focal points as well, the light and the darkness here is going to be a little bit too uh, eye-catching. And obviously, Ashley would did not want people to look at that area too much. Now, if let's say if I were to darken the robots here, same deal. Now, it's not wrong by any means, technically, um, but it does look like it's a little bit too obvious. Again, when it comes to subtlety, I, I've said it in many other videos, subtlety in art is going to make the difference between a good piece and a great piece, and that's where um, Ashley would really put the stamp on it. Now the final point I want to talk about is similar to what I talked about in environment melding. It's the idea of color variation. So color variation is something that's a little bit more advanced. It's something that you might want to hold off on until you really get values down. So color variation is a tool in order to make your piece more interesting to look at rather than just having very distinct colors. And again, when you're painting, it's very different than doing maybe a cartoon or something where you have to worry about production and having it easily uh, copied by other artists in an animation studio. In painting, you want to make sure that you have some sort of interesting uh, dynamics going on with colors too. And you may have noticed already, there this is predominantly a very red tinted painting. Everything is built around most likely this sienna here, this uh, red over here. I'm going to use a different color, this red over here. So what I mean by that is the entire piece is balanced around the fact that it's using this color in pretty much most of the painting, um, in the mixtures of the paint as well. Um, but there will be places, as you may have noticed, that he puts sparks of blue saturation in order to make it more interesting. And I, that's because he wants to avoid a very artificial look. Now, in reality, in reality, our reality has a ton of colors going on, an immense amount of complexity. Now, of course, I'm not expecting artists to, to just copy all the colors that we see, because that's literally 
and physically impossible. However, we can take some of that idea into our painting. So what Ashley Wood does is rather than having one color, one hue for every value, he puts in different hues in order to make it more interesting. Now this might be accidental too, which comes from traditional painting. Your paint brush is going to be sort of dirty. There's going to be different colors flying around and you may get that variation naturally. In digital work, it's actually very easy to fall into the trap of making very static colors. And what I mean by static is, let's say you have a value um, for the sake of example, and all you do is just put the pink in here. Um, that's not going to work. Um, it might work, again, in very select styles like cartooning, um, where you're trying to replicate production, but when it comes to painting, it's just infinitely more interesting and more realistic if you have a little bit of different hues going on, very just different colors. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So what you can do is let's say you have a painting that just isn't working very well. And you may notice that hey, maybe I want to add a bit of colors flying around to create that natural feeling. So why not just take that value and really bring a different, even a different saturation. I mean, you don't have to do a different hue, but I'm just going to do it for a sake of example. The exact same value, but add a bit of interest to it. And this, now this is really ugly for the sake of example, but again, don't be afraid to be chaotic, to use some of that chaos. You don't want too much order in your painting. And where Ashley Wood shines is his work looks very dirty, figuratively and literally, obviously, but there's something about his variation, his color variations, that really break down the shapes to make them more interesting than just having just a flat color. And again, look at this, look at this area. Just look at this area. Look at how many colors are just flying around. And those little textures, it's sort of like you're creating interest where there might not be, even though this is a very flat value, very flat shape, the fact that there's so much texture and there's so much color, so many colors going around, it creates that extra feeling, the extra um, push in order to create a great piece. And I mean, I could talk forever on how many ways he does that in a lot of different paintings, but really study some of your favorite painters and see it's just not one color. Even though if you were to zoom out, you might not be able to see that texture. But once you zoom in, there's so much going on that really takes this to the next level. So hopefully you've learned something. And I implore you to look at more Ashley Wood paintings because he is phenomenal when it comes to just demonstrating picture-perfect painting fundamentals. And hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.